Hello everyone. Today I wanted to talk about a 1968 movie, Secret Ceremony, starring Elizabeth Taylor, Mia Farrow, and Robert Mitchum, directed by Joseph Losey. It is a really strange film, including the title, which is kind of unexplained, and the setup being a young woman played by Mia Farrow. She's childish. She seems delusional. She's just lost her mother. Um, she is uh, traumatized and she spots uh, a woman on a bus played by Elizabeth Taylor, a perfect stranger, uh, and, and decides that's her mother. And, um, and, and Elizabeth Taylor's character has, uh, has, is still in grieving. She's sort of wearing black mourning clothes for her daughter who drowned, her 10-year-old daughter who had drowned five years ago. She goes along with the charade. And especially when uh, when the young woman takes her back to where she lives, she turns out to be uh, an heiress. <laughs> and she's living alone in this giant mansion. And so uh, Elizabeth Taylor is just looking for a daughter, and why not? You know, here's all this luxury, there's fantastic clothing. This is filmed in Debenham House in London. This is a film set in London, and um, it's this... It's a great, great uh, location for a movie, especially a strange movie, because it's a very odd, oddly um, uh, styled house. Uh, there's uh, lots of uh, aquamarine bricking, uh, emerald green tiling everywhere. You walk in to the house and a, a giant entranceway with a dome at the top. Um, so uh, Losey and his cameraman, Gerald Fisher, they use this location magnificently. Even if some of the interiors were shot on uh, in the studio, they match so well with uh, the rest of the decor of the house. So we, we have this charade developing mother and daughter who are not mother and daughter, <laughs> um, but they're play acting the role. And, uh, and the woman, the older woman, gets <clears throat> into the whole uh, uh, she, she begins to like it, this, this life of luxury. But then there's intruders from the outside. Two ants uh, come by, and they're delightfully played by Pamela Brown, Peggy Ashcroft. They're as odd as everything else is in this movie. Uh, and they're, they don't really seem too concerned about this, their young niece. Uh, they seem more uh, interested in filching whatever relics they can get from the, from the family house. And then the other intruder is a masculine one, and this is played by Robert Mitchum, and uh, and he is at his uh, creepy, <laughs> his creepiest. And it's really uh, unusual uh, for an actor of his stature to play some really creepy characters like Max Cady and Cape Fear and the Preacher in Night of the Hunter. And here it's it, it's implied that he has sexually abused um, his uh, stepdaughter. Um, uh, and he doesn't know that the mother has died. So they're all playing a, a rather strange and, uh, and somewhat dangerous game, both uh, uh, and especially a psychically dangerous game. The, the, the psyche of these characters are, uh, are, uh, are, are definitely uh, fringe. They're on the fringes of insanity. Uh, and it's a power struggle. That develops uh, the role. There's role playing going on, a masquerade. Um, who knows what's real anymore? <laughs> uh, and it's it's well suited both to the location and to Joseph Losey's somewhat sour style <laughs> of directing. Uh, there's no Harold Pinter here, and Losey's career resurgence was dependent on Pinter's uh, screenplays for The Servant and The Go Between and uh, Accident. And the uh, Pinter dialogue always had this edge to it, both comic and 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 also um, uh, an, a, an element of, uh, of 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 suspense. And in, in what are people saying? They saying what they mean. Here we get a really good screenplay. This is though by George Tabori, and who made, wrote many very successful plays. And and he um, and. Uh, uh, he, he uh, is adopting an Argentine award-winning novella that had been filmed, I think uh, the commentary says, a couple times in Argentina. And 
But uh, in the commentary by Tim Lucas, he points out the differences between the novella and the movie. And the, for instance, the Robert Mitchum character wasn't even in the novella. Um, and and I think the, it sounds like so, it was very creatively adapted. And then we also get terrific cinematography from Gerald Fisher. He was he had uh, filmed Losey's previous film. Uh, boom, and I think he films, he, he, he is the director of photography on with Losey for the rest of his career. And of course, with the great um, house, and, uh, uh, and then they, they actually film at the beach. We, it, it's a claustrophobic movie, but we do get some exterior scenes. Uh, they go to a beach that was actually filmed in the Netherlands. And I, I mentioned the commentary by Tim Lucas. Um, as this was, uh, he, he points out this was a troubled production. Um, uh, Mitchum was very surly. Uh, Losey had known him from his Hollywood days. Um, Mia Farrow was ill. They had to shut down production for, for a week uh, while she got over her illness. Um, so again, a, a very strange movie. Uh, pre Losey's previous film, Boom, uh, he also did a film called Figures in a Landscape, which I've never seen. Uh, and then uh, in 1972, The Assassination of Trotsky with Richard Burton. Boom starred Elizabeth Taylor and Richard Burton. Richard Burton playing Trotsky, Alain Delon playing Trotsky's assassin. I saw that when it came out. Uh, and I've never seen it since. And you would think with Alan Delon in the cast, he seems to be a big time uh, um, uh, physical release uh, actor. Um, oh, perhaps someday we'll get that. Uh, figures in the landscape I've never seen before. Um, but Losey Losey is in this strange <laughs> period in his career when uh, without Pinter, there's with Pinter and without Pinter in this sort of 63 to 72 era. Um, and I mentioned Mia Farrow being ill, and a lot of that had to do with her impending divorce, uh, very public uh, marriage and divorce from Frank Sinatra at this time. And, uh, um, and she certainly has that lost child, that fra fragility, that waif-like uh, uh, figure that was so beautifully uh, captured by uh, Roman Polanski in uh, Rosemary's Baby in 1968. The Year of Secret Cer Ceremony was the same year as Rosemary's Baby. So I think, he, I, you know, this is a movie I think uh, has, a, has a potential audience, uh, not only for its strangeness, but for some of his performances um, and the look of the film as well. Okay, that'll wrap this, this one up. Uh, thanks, as always, for everybody who managed to listen to me. I do appreciate it. Comments are welcome. You guys take care.